fans, and welcome to another French Fried Trains Minecraft locomotive tutorial. Today, we're going to be building this CNO L1 class steam locomotive, which is a streamlined Hudson type meant for passenger service, and it's fairly unique looking. So let's get right into the build here. So as usual, when I build a steam locomotive, as you can see, I've built a framework here to make sure I get the size and proportion correct. But you don't have to build the framework, I'll just tell you where to put everything. So the first step is to take polished andesite blocks and get three of them coming across the middle of the rails here. On the outside edge of it, we're going to put an outward facing upside down polished andesite stair and another stair behind it. Same thing on this side, so it looks like this. Come around on the front here, put three right side up polish andesite stairs across this bottom middle. And then three stairs up on the block behind it, still facing forward. Then wrap our stairs around the corner and one facing outward behind it. Same thing here. Then we're gonna get three polish andesite blocks across this top middle in between these stairs here. Then we'll do our pilot wheels, so take out a block of polished deep slate for the wheels here. And we're going to come over right behind the back of this stair section on the front. And we're going to get a polished deep slate block on the rail. Leave a gap of two and another one back here. So the pilot truck is four blocks long. Then we'll come over on this side and we'll put an end rod axle coming off each wheel and another wheel on the rails on this side. Then we're going to put a polished black stone button on the sides of the wheels and on the sides of the wheels over here. Then in between the wheels here on the upper hip box, we're going to make a 3 by 2 of polished black stone slabs. And actually I'm going to change these buttons on the wheels to wither skeleton skulls so they're a little bit more three dimensional. Same thing over here, we'll change these buttons to skulls and extend these slabs out so it's three wide. Then we're going to come in and we're going to grab a dark oak fence gate here and we're going to put two dark oak fence gates on the sides of these slabs. Same thing over here, two dark oak fence gates on this side. Then we're going to come on top of this pilot truck here in the center and we're going to make a line of four blocks of netherite coming back right up the center. Then on the second block in from the end, one on the side. And then same thing over here on the second block from the back, one on the side here. Coming off that block, a light gray concrete and one more light gray concrete coming forward. On the front of it, a polished black stone button and that's for our piston. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So coming off that, a light gray concrete, another one forward and a polished black stone button. Then I'm gonna come in behind the wheels here and I'm gonna delete my framework real quick and on the next block behind the wheel and up on the second layer, we're gonna put a row of three stone stairs upside down and facing backwards across the middle. Just like that. Then above the stairs, we're gonna put three stone blocks and coming off that, another row of three backwards upside down stone stairs. So it should look like this from the side. Next, we're going to come in here and actually delete the two middle stairs here. And we're going to put polished black stone block in there. So here and two here. Then we're going to extend it back behind that another 11 blocks back past where the stairs are with a double layer of polished black stone blocks. So it looks like this. Next, we're going to take polished deep slate block, start right here, make three and one on top. Skip a block, three, one on top. Skip a block, three, one on top. Then put one on the bottom middle of each of these so you have a plus shape. And this is going to be the basis for the driving wheels. We'll do the same thing over here. So three and one on top. Skip one, three, one on top. Skip one, three, one on top. Then put one on the bottom middle of each of these so it's a plus shape. Then we're going to come through and round these off with stairs. So upside down polished deep slate stairs facing this way on that side of the wheels and facing this way on this side of the wheels. 
Then we come up on the top of the wheels and do the same thing with right side upstairs, so facing this way in all these corners of the wheels, and facing this corner this way in all these corners of the wheels. Then we'll do the other side, of course. So we'll come through and put all our stairs on the tops of the wheels in the corners here, so they're nice and round. And finally come back through and do upside down stairs in all these corners of the wheels. So all six wheels are nice and rounded off with stairs here. Next we'll do the driving rod. So we're gonna take out polish andesite slabs here and we're gonna come off the bottom hip box of the piston up here. And we're gonna extend a row of five back to the center of this first wheel, then skip up to the bottom hip box of the next block and put a row coming all the way back to the middle of the back driving wheel here. Then up here where it lowers down, we're gonna put a row of iron trap doors above here, just to give the driving rod some more detail. So it looks like that. And then of course, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we start on the bottom hip box of the back of the piston, and we're gonna come back a total of five blocks here. And I was just checking to make sure I had it right. So start right here, five slabs coming back skip up one and come all the way back to the center of the back driving wheel. Then up here, a row of iron trap doors. On top of the piston, we're gonna put two stone blocks. We're gonna knock out this first trap door here and we're gonna put an upside down, backward facing stone stair right here. So it looks like this. Then we'll detail this a little bit more here we're actually going to come and knock out the next iron trap door as well and the slab under it. Then we're going to take out a polish andesite stair and we're going to put it facing backwards so it looks like that connects. That gives it a little bit more detail up here and allows us to put the streamlining piece in. So same thing here, two stone blocks, take out this trap door, an upside down stair of stone facing backwards knock out this trap door and slab and put in a forward facing polish andesite stair. Next, we're gonna swing up in front of this here and on the front of these stone blocks, put a forward facing stone stair on each side. So here and here. Then I took out some of my framework here and on the next block up, another forward facing stair and same thing on this side. Then behind that top stair, we're gonna put a line of stone blocks coming back and we're gonna bring that all the way back till it's aligned with the very back of the rear driving wheel here. So all the way till you get right here. And of course, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So a line of stone blocks here and bring it all the way back till it's aligned with the very back of the rear driving wheel. Underneath the back of this here, on the bottom of this row of stone blocks, we're going to put three stone slabs at the back. And then come up here and one stone slab up in that front corner. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So three stone slabs under here and one up in this front corner. Then on top of this, starting at the back, we're going to put a row of polished andesite blocks stopping one before the front and put a forward facing polish andesite stair on the front. Same thing over here, so a polish andesite stair right here and fill the rest of this to the back with polish andesite blocks. Now come up front behind these stairs and across this bottom middle there's like a vent so we're gonna put three bedrock across here. And I'm knocking out my framework. Behind it, we're gonna put three yellow concrete coming across the middle and a two by three of yellow concrete up here. Then we come up one and forward by one. And up here, we're gonna make a three by two of yellow concrete like this. Then we're gonna come around here, get inside of here. And we're gonna fill in these sides too high with yellow concrete and start bringing it back. Come down here and put one on each of these corners to make sure those stairs are blocked so there's no holes. And then just fill the in both of these sides too high with yellow concrete and bring it down to the back. 
until we get right here at the back of where we built previously for now. So it should be looking something like this. Then we're gonna come on top of the front here, skip one block back from the very front of it and put three yellow concrete across the top. Then I'm gonna delete the rest of this framework up here. Put three yellow concrete across the back of this and fill all the rest of it in three wide on top with yellow concrete so it's completely filled in here. Just like that. Next, we're gonna do the trailing wheels underneath the cab here. So I'm gonna come back under here and I'm just deleting some of that framework out of the way real quick. And we're gonna take out polished deep slate block to be the rear wheels. Behind this driving wheel, we're gonna leave a gap of three blocks and on the fourth block back, we're gonna get a polished deep slate block on each rail here to be the wheels. And an end rod between them for an axle. And we'll skip two and do another set of polished deep slate wheels with end rod axles. Then in between the wheels, we're gonna put upside down polished andesite stairs, five blocks wide, and a back-to-back T-shaped -back pattern. Just like that. Then, right side upstairs on each rail in front of the wheels, facing forward, and right side upstairs facing backward on each of the rails behind the wheels here. Then we're gonna come above here on the middle on the second and third block up and put a double layer of polished blackstone blocks coming up the middle, starting right behind the driving wheels there, and that's gonna be 10 blocks long in total. Once you have it 10 blocks long, we're gonna extend both layers of that polished blackstone out to the side by one block and all the way to the back. And then same thing on the other side. Extend the polished blackstone layers out to the side by one block, all the way down to the back. Then we'll come up to the front of it and we'll put a forward facing upside down stone stair on top here. Skip down one and back one and another upside down stair. So it's like an upside down staircase. Do the same thing on this side. So an upside down stair of stone here and here. Then. We'll come on the side of it and fill in everything behind the stairs with stone block, two layers tall, all the way down to the back of it. And do the same thing over here. So two layers of stone blocks here coming down to the back of it. And once we have that, we're gonna come underneath here and in front of each wheel, we're gonna hang an upside down grindstone. Same thing here, upside down grindstone in front of each wheel on the side here. Then on this bottom back corner, two stone slabs on the bottom underneath. And same thing on this side, two stone slabs right here. Now we'll start framing in the cap. So above this, starting up here, we're gonna put a full line of stone blocks all the way down to the back. Then I'm just gonna take out some of this framework here and then same thing on this side, a full line of stone blocks all the way down to the back. Then above that, we're gonna do a full line of polished andesite blocks, starting here and going all the way down to the back. And then same thing on this side, a full line of polished andesite blocks. Then on the side, just in front of this yellow concrete, we're gonna put an oak stair facing forward, right side up. And then same thing on this side, an oak stair right here. Then we'll swing around behind the stair here and we're gonna put three yellow concrete coming back behind the stair and two yellow concrete at the very back. Same thing here, three yellow concrete up there, two over there. Then we're gonna come on top of it here and we're gonna extend this yellow concrete back one so it blocks the stair in. And we'll actually extend the top back another one and then we'll put a polished andesite stair facing forward on each side of the top two polished andesite blocks up here and two on each of the back corners. Then this side gap is for the windows 
and we're gonna fill all the windows in with black stained glass pane, two blocks tall here. And then same thing on this side, fill this all in with black stained glass panes. Once that's done, we're gonna come down inside here and we're gonna put three polished black stone across this back end in the middle. And then we'll come in and fill the rest of this floor in with oak wood planks, three wide. And we'll bring it all the way up to the front here. When we get up here, we're gonna do the back of the boiler and the firebox. So we're gonna crouch and we're gonna put a yellow shulker box on either side, fill up here with yellow concrete, a yellow shulker box on the top middle. Then an outward facing oak wood stair on either side of this top here so it looks rounded. Then we're gonna come down in here, knock out that bottom block, fill the second block back with a column of two yellow concrete, put in nether brick, light it on fire, and close the trap door over it. Then I started to put my stairs in here, but I wasn't liking how large this cab looked. It didn't look quite right to me, so I'm actually gonna extend this firebox back a little bit here. So I took the seats out, took these stairs off, took the trap door off, and I'm gonna knock out this next middle block, put in another brick, light it on fire. Then we'll crouch, put another yellow shulker box on either side, and one on the top. Then we'll put two outward facing oak stairs on either side of these top shulker boxes, so this boiler extends back a little bit and shrinks the size of the cap. Then we put a lever on the right for the engineer here. We're gonna put a trap door in front of this fire, so there's a door over it that you can open and close. And then here and here, an item frame with compasses for gauges. Then we'll turn around and put a seat on each side, and now the cab looks a little bit more proportional. Back here, we're gonna put three stone brick walls on either side and one across the top middle here. Now come on this front middle, put a polished andesite block in the center here and here. On the bottom one, put a glow item frame on the front. And inside of the glow item frame, we're going to put a glowstone for the front headlight here. Then on top of the block with the headlight, a light gray stained glass paint. Now on top of the very front here, two polished andesite slabs in the middle. And behind it, we'll make it three wide of polished andesite slabs here. Then we're gonna extend a line of polished andesite slabs all the way down both sides of the top here. And when we get to the cab, we're gonna fill it in three wide with polished andesite slabs all the way down to fill in the cab roof. We'll bring it right to the back and extend it out one block past the back here. Then we're gonna take out iron trap doors behind this stair and fill in this top outside edge down the length to the back of it here with iron trap doors. So we have a slight slope to our roof on the cab here. So it looks like that. Then we're gonna come on top of the cab at the front of it here. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna grab some deep slate tile slabs. We're gonna knock out these two, put in deep slate tile slabs and another two on top because there's a vent. Now come on the top of the front of the locomotive here, knock out this first yellow concrete block in the center. Down inside there, we're gonna stack three hay bales and then put a sole campfire above it. Right here we put an iron trap door and that makes our smoke coming out. Behind it, a deep slate tile slab, then we're gonna put four polished andesite slabs coming up the middle, then another deep slate tile slab, then we're going to put six polished andesite slabs coming back, and three coming forward from the front, so we leave that one there open. Then we're going to come in here, and we're going to grab a yellow candle, and in this gap, put some yellow candles for the whistle just like that. Now we're gonna come on the sides here and above this top stair, we're gonna put a vertical end rod. 
Same thing on this side here. Then we'll come back here on the second stair up, starting at the cab, and bring a full line of horizontal end rods forward. And we're gonna bring that till it's right above that vertical end rod. So it's gonna look like this from the side. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. So come over here, start up here, and do a full line of horizontal end rods all the way forward until it's above the vertical end rod that we already placed up here. Just like that. Now come up front, above the bedrock in the center, put an end stone brick wall right there. Because there's this little part that sticks out. Now we're gonna take out a dark oak sign for the number boards, put one on this side slab here, and type 490. Same thing on the other side. Then we're gonna hit both of those signs with white dye, and then a glow ink set. Next, we need to make some banners, so come into a loom with a light gray banner and blue dye. We're gonna put a vertical on the left, switch to light gray dye, make the bottom half light gray. Switch back to blue dye, horizontal in the middle, vertical on the right. New banner, vertical on the right, top half blue. New banner, vertical on the left, vertical on the right, horizontal on top, horizontal on bottom. Switch to light gray dye and put a light gray border around all three of those banners. And this is for our numbers on the side of the cab here. So we'll come back here under the window and use our banners to put 490. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So come under the window back here and use those banners to put 490. Then we need to make some different banners here. So we can go ahead and clear those banners out of our hotbar. And we're gonna come back into our loom here. This time with a yellow banner and blue dye. We're gonna put a vertical on the left, vertical on the right, horizontal on top, horizontal on bottom, new banner, vertical on the left, horizontal on top, horizontal on bottom. Switch to yellow dye and put a yellow border around both of these. And this is for where it says CNO on the side here. So we're gonna come up here with our banners, put a C here and then over and down one and O. Then we have to put it on the other side here. So we'll put the C up here and stagger forward and down one and put the O. And that's for where it says C and O, and now the banners are completed for the locomotive. Next, we're gonna come down here behind the engine and do the coupler. So we're gonna turn around and get a dark oak stair stacked up to that second middle block. Delete the ones we use for placement. Put another stair facing the other way. And then under the middle, we're gonna start back here and put a line of dark oak fence gates coming up past the coupler and one block past it. Now we'll do the tender wheels here. So one block behind that last dark oak fence gate, we're gonna put a polished deep slate on the rail and then skip to another polished deep slate, skip to another polished deep slate. And that's for the wheels on this side. Then we'll come around here and in the middle blocks here, we'll put an end rod coming off each one for axles, and then a polished deep slate wheel on this side for all three. Then we're gonna take polished andesite stairs in between here, and we're gonna put upside down polished andesite stairs, five wide, and a back-to-back T-shaped -back pattern in between the wheels here. Then we'll do the same thing in between these wheels, so upside down polished andesite stairs, five wide, and a back-to-back T-shaped -back pattern here. Then we're gonna leave a gap of six blocks behind this truck, and on the seventh block, we'll start the next truck. So we're gonna get a polished deep slate wheel on each rail with an end rod axle. And I'm just deleting some more of this framework here then behind this set of wheels, again, we do upside down, polished andesite stairs, five wide, and a back-to-back T-shaped -back pattern. 
Then behind that, another set of polished deep slate wheels with an end rod axle. And then another group of polished andesite stairs, upside down, five wide, and a back-to-back T-shaped pattern. Behind that, a final set of polished deep slate wheels with an end rod axle. Then we're gonna come back up to the front of the tender here and across the top of the very first set of wheels, we're gonna fill it in three wide with polished andesite blocks. And then we're gonna extend this top middle three with polished andesite all the way down, come all the way across this truck. And we're gonna come one block past these back wheels. Then once we have that, we're going to come back up to the front of the tender and on this top center we're going to put a single polished andesite block to connect up that coupler and on the upper hitbox on either side of it a stone slab. Then we're going to come on this outside edge, start behind the slab and put a full row of outward facing upside down polished andesite stairs down to the back of it. Do the same thing on this side so a full row of outward facing upside down polished andesite stairs stopping right before that slab. On top of the front here, behind where these slabs are, we're gonna make a three by two of polished andesite blocks, and then three coming forward across this top here. And this is gonna be tricky to do. We're gonna to have to stand on the coupler and crouch to do it. We're gonna take dark oak fence gates and put a sideways line of dark oak fence gates here until it connects with the locomotive. As you can see, I was having some trouble with them opening. Turn around crouch, do the same thing on this side. Sideways dark oak fence gates to connect up the tender and the locomotive here. Then in between here on the top middle three, we're gonna put two rows of three dark oak trap doors for the little folding platform to get from the locomotive to the tender. Then we're gonna grab some stone brick walls and extend this whole stone brick wall section back by one so that diaphragm piece extends back by one. On the back of this platform in the center, we're gonna put a column of two black stone blocks to represent the coal and two polished andesite in a column on either side of that. Next, we're gonna come down on the side here above these stairs, and we're gonna do a full layer of stone blocks from the front all the way down to the back. Then we'll do the same thing on this side. So start right here and a full line of stone blocks. On this back middle, we're gonna make a two by three of polished andesite, and then above these stone blocks, a full line of polished andesite blocks from the back all the way up here to the front. And of course, we'll do the same thing on this side. So a full line of polished andesite blocks up here. On the next layer, starting from the front, three polished andesite and three polished andesite from the back. Come back up here and we're gonna do five lapis lazuli blocks, a polished andesite, a single lapis lazuli, a polished andesite, five more lapis lazuli, and fill that back gap here with two polished andesite. This represents where it says Chesapeake in Ohio because we can't fit it with banners. Then we'll bring polish andesite across the back and we'll just copy our lapis lazuli pattern exactly across from the other side here. So you should have five on each end and a single one in the center and fill the rest of that with polish andesite to the front. On the next layer up we're going to start from the front with stone blocks and extend a line of stone blocks 13 blocks back so it's into the second block of that back lapis lazuli. We'll do the same thing on this side here. Then I'm just gonna take out the rest of this framework real quick. Then we'll come back up to the front of the tender, across this front, five forward facing polished andesite stairs, then wrap around the corner and a row of outward facing polished andesite stairs to the back of this stone brick line. Same thing on this side, a row of sideways stairs up here. Then we're gonna fill in the middle three in between all these stairs with blackstone blocks to represent the coal. 
You can use coal if you want. I use blackstone because it has a little bit more detail. Fill this all in so it looks like it's full of coal. And then I'm gonna randomly stack some blackstone slabs up here just to give the coal pile some three-dimensionality here. Then behind this, we're gonna go all the way around the top outside edge with polished andesite blocks. We'll also fill in all this top middle three with polished andesite block so the whole thing is enclosed here. Then across the back of this coal pile, five backward facing polished andesite stairs. And then on each top outside edge, we're gonna run a line of polished andesite slabs down to the back. So each side sticks up like that. Then we're gonna take out a dark oak stair for the rear coupler, turn around and stack it up to that middle second block. Delete the one we use for placement. And underneath here in the center, we'll put two dark oak fence gates sideways for an airline. Then on the side of this bottom corner, open a dark oak fence gate, because there's a little step, and do the same thing on this side. Then we'll come to the front of the tender, and on the side up here, we're gonna put three dark oak fence gates, because there's a ladder coming up right here. Do the same thing over here. So three dark oak fence gates coming up. Then we're gonna take out some grindstones here, come on bottom, and everywhere there's a wheel, we're gonna hang an upside down grindstone on the side in front of it. Same thing on this truck up here. And then we'll do the other side. So come on bottom over here, it's the same thing. Everywhere there's a wheel, hang an upside down grindstone in front of it on the side of the truck. And then same thing back here as well. Once that's done, we're gonna swing around and detail the top and the back of the tender here. So we're gonna come up top here. These three middle stairs, we're actually gonna take out and replace with three polished andesite blocks and a ladder on the left-hand block. Then we'll come to the back of the tender and on each side here, we're gonna put a column of four iron bars coming up. Then on the left-hand side, we're gonna run a ladder up and on the second block down on middle, a glow item frame with a glowstone for the rear headlight. Up here, on the right hand side, one block in, we put a skeleton skull, a wither skeleton skull, and then three more skeleton skulls for the water fill ports. Then we're going to come back on the bottom of the locomotive here, and down here we're going to put a column of four iron bars, and we'll do the same thing over here. So a column of four iron bars on this side down here. Add an extra one there, I had to delete it. And I just realized I made an error. There's supposed to be a yellow stripe on the tender. So we're gonna delete this entire row down the side underneath the stairs and slabs. And we're gonna go from back to front with a full line of yellow concrete. Just bring it all the way up to the front here. And then of course, we have to do it on the other side. So we'll delete this whole row up here on this side. And replace it with a full line of yellow concrete from front to the back of the tender. And there we have it folks. We've completed our CNO L1 class streamlined steam locomotive. I hope you enjoyed the build here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And everyone have a great week. Stay safe out there, rail fans.